Bob, thank you very much for those very generous remarks. And before that, of course, to Ruth. And as you've already worked out, I, I don't actually come from these parts. <laughs> you know, there's a, three years ago, my wife Lindsay and I, or two and a half years ago, my wife Lindsay and I came to the United States and it was a tremendous opportunity to become immersed in a great personal passion, which is how do you make a difference? And how can you make that difference unless you find out? So the journey that I've been on has been extraordinary. And let me just share a couple of, of core statistics which sort of caught my eye, and I continually find them catching everybody's when we think about them. Across the whole of the United States, the whole of the US, just over 80% of students in high school complete and graduate. So two out of 10 don't. But of course, that's not reflective of what's going on in some of our urban areas where the numbers are much lower. Across the whole of the community college system, only three out of every 10 young people who enroll complete their associate degree. Seven out of 10 fall by the wayside. And across all the four-year schools, all the four-year schools, around a half graduate in six years. So when we think about it, we all know, everybody in this room knows, that the pathway to a fulfilling, satisfied life involves lots of education. It's got lots of criteria that come. Your mental health is generally better. It's quite important. Actually, it'll increase your propensity to vote, which this year could be particularly important. <laughs> the, and I say that as a non-voter who's just watching in a non-partisan <laughs> way. So the question is, how do we make a difference? And one of the extraordinary things and one of the exciting things about being up here is to find those examples of organizations which make a difference. And then to say, well, what can you do to build them, to make them better, to support them? And to support, like in every organization, a great leader. And Ruth is exactly that. So the things that I just bring to your attention is that what is intriguing about HEAF is that it's not a selective organization picking the top of the distribution and helping them accelerate. It's non-selective. It's an organization which looks at the forgotten middle. And what does that mean? That means people who the system is badging as ordinary, which is not right because they're not. They're not at all ordinary. The system is the one that's failing. And yet we see that because when they've been through this amazing process that Ruth and her colleagues here, who I am so proud to be having the chance to make a pitch for, when you see what they do, they help the extraordinary in these people come forth and allow them to fulfill their potential in a remarkable way. And the statistics bear it out. So I think that that is the most dramatic effect that one could ever ask for. It's an incredibly powerful endorsement to break that statistical pattern. I'm a first generation, you know, my father, my brother's sitting there. Neither he nor I had a father who completed college, but both of us had a father who was adamant that we would finish college. And the two elements of the Heath program, first, a complete expectation of success, and secondly, the wraparound support to make that possible are really fundamental. So I'm delighted that with a number of colleagues from McGraw-Hill who really are the heroes of the work that we're doing, we're here, we're looking forward to supporting Heath going forward. Ruth, thank you. We're really proud to be associated with you and delighted to be here this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>